Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Methead, and today's video is going to be over what, when, why, and how to use Anki. It was a highly requested video, so I thought I had to get it out for you guys. Alright, so what is Anki? When it really comes down to it, it really just is flashcards, but it's flashcards with a twist. And this kind of leads into why you should use Anki. Anki has an algorithm that works with the forgetting curve. If you haven't heard what the forgetting curve is, it's basically the principle that as time goes on from when we initially learned a topic or a concept, we're going to forget it pretty soon after we learn it. Anki's algorithm is built in to help you remember as much as you can over a long period of time. So if you have lots of details that you need to remember over a long period of time, whether that's remembering details for a final, the MCAT, or for something in med school, this video is for you. Now that we've gotten the what, why, and when out of the way, let's do the main part of this video, the how. So if you don't have the Anki app yet, I do have the download link in the description down below. And just know before we start, Anki is a commitment. Anki every day is the best way for it to work. It's the way the algorithm was built for it to work. Um, so if you want to do Anki every other day, that's okay. Just know that the algorithm won't produce as optimal results as intended. So this video is going to largely hit on the high yield Anki topics on how to use it. All the details like settings and stuff like that, I will show you and introduce you guys to. However, I do have links to videos with more in-depth details on those topics in the description down below, but I will touch on most of the high yield components. So here is what the Anki screen is going to look like when you log in. Uh, a lot of the extra stuff are add-ons and I'll tell you guys what add-ons are soon. Um, but you will see these decks laid out for you and you'll have a do column and a new column. So the differences between the do's and the news that your do cards are cards that you have seen before and your new cards are obviously new cards that you haven't seen. Do cards are going to be split into two different types of cards. As you can see down here, I have 263 do cards due today. I have already studied 240 cards today, but I have 263 do cards left and I have 73 new cards left also. And that adds up to about 335 cards, but the do cards split into two different types the learning and the reviewing. 241 of my do cards are review cards, which means that I have already passed the learning stage for those cards. And 22 of my do cards are learning cards, which means I have not passed the learning stage. I am still in the learning phase for those cards. I'm gonna explain further what the difference between the learning and review cards are. But first, I also wanna introduce add-ons because as the video goes on, I'm gonna kind of introduce you guys to each of the add-ons I have, but the large ones I use are hierarchical tags, image occlusion, the review heat map, and frozen fit. Builds, and I'll kind of talk about that as we go through this. However, if you want to learn how to use an add-on, add-ons are certain features that can make your Anki experience better. However, you do have to go to a website where these creators of these add-ons have codes that you insert into the Anki app and I'll show you guys how to do that now. I do have the link to these websites in the description down below for each of the add-ons that I have kind of emphasized but you can type in in Google um, one of the add-ons names and Anki and it'll bring you right to the website so if I want to look for a hierarchical tag and usually you can type in Anki to kind of specify what you're looking for in Google it'll bring you to it and you'll kind of go through a description and it will tell you how to kind of use it if there's any updates to be made and you will take a code here, you'll copy and once you have that copied, you'll go back to Anki, you'll click tools, add on and this little screen here, you're gonna type get add-ons and I don't know why it's all spawning over there but type in the code and it, you press OK. Since I already have it, it won't make any difference when you press OK X out of the app, come back, and the add-on will be there. So any of the add-ons I'm talking about, that's how you add them. So I do get this question a lot as to whether I make my own Anki cards, and the answer largely is no. Every once in a while, I do make my own cards when it's something I need specifically for my learning, but I mostly use pre-made cards either made by my school's MS2s or the Anking deck, and I'll talk about the Anking deck in a little bit. However, I will also show you guys how to make your own cards because I think that is an important skill to have just in case you need to edit or have your own cards that are specific for your learning. But first, I'm going to show you what I largely do as a medical student with pre-made cards. So like I said, I would open the screen. Uh, this is actually an add-on here called the heat map. You won't see this when you first have the app. Uh, the heat map just basically lets you track your progress, your streaks. As you can see, um, I'm on 110 days right now, and you can kind of see how many you did in certain days. So yesterday I did 658 cards, 741 before that, and it will just kind of tell you. Today I did the 240, you can see over here also. And then if you go to tomorrow, it'll kind of estimate how many you have due tomorrow without adding any more new cards today. And 
before adding new cards today, I will have 335 to do tomorrow, but usually I have new cards that I will add in. And this is how I add those new cards in. I'll watch a lecture, whether that will be an in-house lecture or it will be a sketchy video or a Boards of Beyond video. And then I'll come up here to browse. And these pre-made decks are something that you have to find and download. And you can find them almost anywhere. But the pre-made deck I use, I will put the link in the description below. The Anking deck is a overhaul deck of many of the popular ones like Zonki, LOL Not A Cop, things like that. And they put them together and they are specific for step one and step two exams. If you look for instructions for how to download decks on Anki on Google, it should be there. But I have the link for the actual download in the description below for what I use. And because I have the Hierarchical Tags add-on, which we kind of talked about add-ons before, it's really organized here. And as you can see, I look for things by tag. So if I want to go to something that's for step one studying, I will click here. And it'll bring me down to a bunch of these resources. And I talked about boards and beyond. So BNB or Sketchy Micro, I'll watch a video for that. Let's say I watch a Sketchy Micro video and let's say it was bacteria. And the specific video we watched was over Nicera gonorrhea. So we'd click that. And usually these would all be suspended because before I suspend everything. So I only have things unsuspended that I already watched the lecture for because you don't want a crazy amount of cards unsuspended for things you haven't even learned yet. So you'd come here, unsuspend it. So when you're unsuspending, you'll select the certain amount of cards you want to unsuspend, or you can control all if it's the whole video. And usually I do control all for this whole video. Press control all, it'll select, right click and press suspend. But I have an add on for the toolbars for the suspend up here. So it'll look a little different for you. And by the time I come back, it will have them prepared, ready there. They all will show up in the new section because I've just unsuspended them. All right, so when I'm ready to do the cards, I come here to Anking deck or any deck I would want to do. Click and get ready. So do you see down here where it says 10? Those are the learning cards. And like I said, I will tell you guys what learning means a little bit more later. But the learning steps are fairly new cards. Um, they're not quite new. We've seen them before, but we haven't gotten them out of the learning phase yet. And so if I read here, lethal factor is an exotoxin from Bacillus anthracis that cleaves blank, resulting in tissue necrosis, black, Eskar formation on the skin and if I say map K and that's the answer I would click good and if I thought it was easy I would click easy I usually only click good because that's the best way the algorithm works for me I've found but if you click easy it won't show you this card again for four days and I'll kind of tell you why it won't show you this card for four days in a bit like I said if I click again it'll show me this card again in 25 minutes these settings you can change or how long it will wait to show you and I'll show you guys that in the settings but if I click good, it'll show me that card tomorrow. So now we're on the review cards, which means that we have seen it before. It's not new and we got it out of the learning phase, which means we have graduated to the review phase. And I'll show you what the graduated part means in a bit also. So for this card, since it's in review, I'll get more options than again, good and easy. So species B of Streptococcus pyogenes is associated with, and if I say necrotizing fasciitis, that would be the answer. And it will show me a bunch of different options like hard, good, or easy. If I click hard, it'll show me again in seven days. If I click good, it'll show me in 15. And if I click easy, it'll show me in 26. And again, in 30 minutes. And the Anki algorithm does this by showing me cards that I don't do as well with, that I click hard with more often. It'll show me those cards more often. And the cards that I think are easy, it'll show me less often. So that's the beauty of the Anki algorithm. You would go to settings by clicking on whatever little icons to the right of the deck. Click on options there and it will bring you to the settings. I have this setting for the default of all decks, so that's why it says that, but you can set the setting specific for whatever deck you would want, whether it be the anatomy deck I have or the foundations deck, but I have it on default for all. And then you'll see something called steps right here. And what it means by steps is the steps it takes for you to get out of the learning phase that we kind of talked about those learning cards. So this is your again button, and this would be the good button. This means if I see a new card and I click again, I'll see it in 25 minutes. If I see a new card and I click good, I'll see it again in one day. It's 1,440 minutes, which is basically a day. So I'll see that in 1,440 minutes. If I click the good button here, and then I will see it the next day. And at that point, it won't be a new card anymore. It'll be a learning card, it'll be in the learning phase. So if I see that card again, we can get it out of the learning phase by graduating into the review phase, like I said a little earlier. And that's where this part comes in. And so since I have my graduating interval set to three days, and we'll see it as a learning card because we've already seen the card. If we hit good again for the second time, it will show me again in three days 
and it will graduate it into review phase. And that card will be now be a review card. And once it's a review card, it starts going on in its own Anki algorithm to show you more or less of it depending on how well you know that specific card. So this is basically how you set which intervals you would want the buttons to spread out for you. And if you kind of didn't understand as well what I meant by the steps, and the graduating intervals and things like that. I do have a video below down in the description that goes more in depth on the details of the settings. And now let's get to the fun stuff, editing and making your own Aki cards. There are often times where I'm kind of just going through the cards and I find that one is not really made super well or it's not good for my learning. So I wouldn't normally do this with this card because I find that this card is okay. But just for example purposes, if I were reading Streptococcus sanguinis, mixed dextrins, which bind to fibrin platelet aggregates on damaged, and I know the answer is heart valves, but let's say that I didn't like that that was the closed deletion by itself. I needed kind of like a little hint or something to point myself in the right direction. What I can do is go to the edit area and you can click E on your keyboard to bring you there very quickly for edit. Go to the heart valves and that closed deletion section and I'll show you to make closed deletions in a little bit. This is what they look like. So for each blank, you would have a closed deletion there. You would have one here. And you would have one here. So this card technically has three different questions that it can ask based off of the closed deletions. This question it decided to ask for this specific card that you guys saw earlier were the heart valves and that is closed deletion three. So it's like blank three. And if I wanted to make it more specific and edit that, what I could do is I could do two colons and maybe I wanted the hint to be, it's a type of structure. So whenever I type that in and I come back and I read it, it will now show me the hint is, okay, we're looking for a structure that's damaged. And obviously, like I said, that's very nitpicky. Um, I find the card to be fine, but damaged structure, heart valves. For another part of editing, you may want to enter in a picture or something to kind of remind yourself of that specific topic or that card. So let's say I'm being nitpicky and we have this card that says the medulla of the lymph node contains high number of plasma cells. I know that's the answer, but if I also wanted a picture when I said plasma cells to remind myself of where we were talking about with the medulla, I could take the slide from the lecture, come here to edit, and in the extra section, you'll see a space you can put pictures or whatever you want. And in this case, I wanted a picture here to kind of remind myself. And so if we come back here to the card, we see the card like normal, but when we click the answer, we'll have this little slide picture to remind me of what concept I'm dealing with. So now enough of that editing stuff for creating cards, what you can do is you can go to whatever specific deck that you want. But if you want to make your own deck, you can click create deck down here. You can type in medhead deck and the deck will appear. When you click on the medhead deck, there's no cards because I haven't made any. You can click the add button up here. And let's say the detail I want to remember is that medhead is nice. Don't know if that's true, but the textbook told me medhead is nice. So we want to remember that detail. And here we would highlight nice because we want to remember medhead is nice. So we're going to do a fill in the blank by clicking command shift C. When you click Command Shift C, it will put it in a closed deletion, which basically means that whenever I see the card, it'll say Medhead is blank, and we have to guess nice. Let's say we also want to remember that it's specifically Medhead that's nice. We can make a different blank here, highlighting that, clicking Command Shift C, and it will be the second closed deletion, so it will show up as blank is nice, and you can guess Medhead is nice. Even though we only had one card, it was two closed deletions, so it will show up technically as two cards for each closed deletion. So we're in the Medhead deck, we have two new cards, and when I click here, I'll say Medhead is blank. Nice. And let's say we have Medhead is weird. Medhead is weird. And we want the extra to remind us that Medhead is weird, but it's fine. I don't know why that would be an extra piece of information you would want to know with the concept, but you get the gist. And if you wanted this extra card to be continued on multiple different cards, you can click the frozen button and it will continue to maintain that section in the extra section so you don't have to keep retyping it if you freeze it. This is a type of add-on that I do have in the description below. To see it in action, we can do Medhead is weird, we can do a closed deletion for this, Command Shift C, add. And on the next card, it's still there because we wanted to keep that extra going for the different types of cards. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is how to make image occlusion cards. And that is another add-on you guys have to add and that is the description down below. So for another card called image occlusion, it's actually super nice for anatomy. What you do is you would click on this little button up here. It'll bring you here to 
um, files and I like to save all my screenshots and things like that on my desktop. So let's say for this specific concept, here we wanted to memorize certain things on this picture, which is nice for image occlusion is that you can come here and it'll show you the picture and you can click there and that usually that's pre-clicked and you just drag and that would be one card. Here you can do another if you wanted to remember this specific enzyme that gets cholesterol into the mitochondria, you would just drag here and there you go. So let's say I wanna do hide all guests one and I will show you guys. So two cards were added because I added two squares and if we go back to our Medhead deck, you can see here that we added this card and once we click, this will still remain hidden because we did hide all guests one. So it's hiding all of them. So that is what image occlusions is. It's super nice for anatomy if you wanna kinda of hide the label from the structure. I highly recommend that. But that is it for my high yield review on how to use Anki, how to edit cards, how to make cards. And then it's just simply an overview of what I wanted you guys to know and what I find super important for being successful with Anki. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you want some more specifics on Anki, like how I got that background or more aesthetic things or more detailed parts of Anki, let me know in the description below. Next week, I'm getting my wisdom teeth pulled out and I'm gonna be probably doing a video on getting your wisdom teeth pulled out in medical school. So be tuned for that in the next video. But until then, see you guys later. Thank you.